Hi everybody, Assalamualaikum So we're going to go into the next chapter which is uh, a case study of uh, coastal upwelling So I have here uh, four different case studies So today we're going to look at a South China Sea uh, upwelling system There is two South China Sea upwelling system which is one is in along the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia one in the north of Borneo in Sabah area and then we are going to look at Hainan Island and Borneo upwelling in Australia so basically we have uh, many upwelling a small upwelling area in, in the area of South China Sea so for example we have Hainan upwelling here we have Philippines upwelling here and Vietnam upwelling so this is a, a very well known upwelling area these two upwelling area here in Malaysia which is East Coast and Sabah area is less well known because for instance along the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia uh, a team from University of Malaysia Terengganu uh, which um, I am part of, of the team so we are the one that actually produced uh, an understanding of this upwelling area quite recently in 2012 and also Sabah area we are still studying it now so one of my uh, postgraduate students are looking into a much detailed study of uh, upwelling area in Sabah so this is also quite new to our understanding so of obviously the upwelling is there but our understanding uh, is, is not there yet okay uh, if you look at the uh, uh, the wind stress in the right side so basically this wind stress is actually the one that produces uh, you can basically see uh, the upwelling favorable what we call as upwelling favorable wind so we have uh, for instance in Vietnam so you have in June uh, wind is along the coast and then you have Ekman Dynamics going to out and then you have outwelling area similar to Hainan Island so you have outwelling to the north and then Ekman Dynamics to the right and then outwelling area if you look at the the wind stress especially in the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia so this is Peninsula Malaysia so this is Terengganu Okay, so usually during summertime or uh, southern monsoon you have wind going to that direction so we can consider this as a, a, a longshore upwelling favorable wind because what happened is this wind system will create Ekman dynamic water going out so what happened is you have you know, upwelling area along the east coast of peninsula uh, Malaysia so you can clearly see this from the wind stress analysis so this wind stress analysis if you look at between January and February which is northern monsoon compare with July and August in July and August you have the red color means that it is upwelling is much more favorable to happen so here in July and here in August you can see a very strong upwelling wind but instead you have a very minimal upwelling winds during the north of monsoon so in southwest monsoon upwelling will happen along the east coast of peninsula malaysia but it will not happen during uh, north of monsoon it is simple because the wind is moving into the opposite direction so during north of monsoon so wind is coming from the north to the south so and instead of creating upwelling it create it creates you know, downwelling area and if you look at the seasonality it is also interesting uh, in January during North East Monsoon so you don't see uh, cool water here but you see cool water in the Vietnam area because there is a uh, you know, low water temperature waters coming from the north to the south this is what we call as a cold tongue from the north so you have cooler water coming down because of the season not because of upwelling but if you look at here during August you can see a clear upwelling signature along the east coast because this uh, water coming from the subsurface but also at the same time you have cool water from Karimata Straits moving to the north so this water combines with the upwelling waters create uh, much cooler water than the surrounding waters and then if you look at here uh, the thermocline uplifting thermocline uplifting is one of the most important features that you will find uh, a classical uh, features that you will find from your data sets so this data set is uh, collected uh, from our crews so you remember thermocline thermocline is a, 
uh, an area where you have a, a rapid change in, in temperature so this contour plot is a, a transect plot from from a cruise so we have four plots from north to the south uh, Trenggano area, Dungon area and then we have Kuantan and also uh, one transect in Johor so you can see along this area there is what we call as a thermocline uplifting so you have a very deep thermocline here in the offshore <coughs> all right and then suddenly close to the coast this thermocline is being uplifted so there is no possi other possible reason rather than Ekman dynamics that pushing this water up to the surface and of course because of outwelling we have a very high productivity of you know, fisheries area so this actually happens in uh, the east coast of peninsula Malaysia especially in Trigano and Kuantan area <coughs> so uh, 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 you can see this so you can see this data set from uh, fisheries department so this this is 10 year data set average data set so you can see increase of uh, this fish landing activity which means you know uh, how many fish landed into uh, the fishing jetties uh, all uh, uh, around the jetties uh, along the east coast of peninsula Malaysia so you can see uh, huge amounts of you know fish always concentrated in the uh, month of August and September which is the peak of uh, outwelling season so now let's move to the next one which is in the North Sabah area so in Sabah area, basically, if you have Sabah and Sarawak, okay, so it will be the opposite. So in Sabah, upwelling cannot happen during not southern monsoon because southern monsoon will produce you know, this type of wind. So if this type of wind happens, Ekman dynamics will move to the to the right, which is it creates instead of upwelling, it creates downwellings. So in Sabah. <coughs> so in Sabah, upwelling happens during the northeast monsoon when you have wind coming from the north to the south. So it will create Ekman dynamics away from the coast and it create upwelling area. But one important thing about Sabah is it has a very different features of bathymetry or you know <coughs> bottom uh, oceans. So it has a very steep slope. Uh, in Sabah which means that the area at uh, the bottom area is, is very deep so this is very much different from the uh, east coast of peninsula Malaysia where we have only about 60 or 70 meter depth so you can see over here in Sabah bathymetry so this is a very steep uh, trough uh, for Sabah so this goes up to 2000 meter depth so this is a very steep slope so what happened here is when you have a very steep slope the water around here is much cooler and more in terms of nutrients so that's why in Sabah that is the unique parts of this upwelling system so it can produce a very strong upwelling so this cool water is actually indicator of upwelling system so you can see during December in January we start to have uh, the development of upwelling and then in February and March you can see a very strong uh, cool waters around the area it goes up to 25 degrees so we only see about you know, uh, 28 and 29 degrees in the east coast of peninsula Malaysia but in Sabah you can go the waters goes up to 25 degrees which is very low uh, temperature waters because it comes from a much deeper area So now let's have a look at the third upwelling area which is Hainan Island. Hainan is slightly uh, further up to the north of Vietnam. So Hainan Island is uh, upwelling is almost similar to what we have in uh, the east coast of Peninsula Malaysia. Hainan is basically a, a big island. So this is China mainland and then there is one big island over here. So what they have is during summer monsoon or north south of monsoon, the wind is going to that direction. So basically by now 
you can tell how upwelling happens here. So we have Eichmann Dynamics moving to the right and then you have basically upwelling happens on the right side of Hainan Island. But that's not the only things. So this case study we will see how other components or other dynamics can produce outwelling differently. So in this Hainan Island case, we figure out, you know, the scientists figure out that there is another outwelling system happen on the left side of the island. How that happens? This is interesting because supposedly wind going into that direction it will not create upwelling. Instead, this area should be you know, downwelling because the water is moving into the coast. So, we will have a look at much details dynamics in the Hainan Island to give you some sort of... Uh, because each area will have different details of uh, upwelling system. So, let's have a look at it. So, this is Hainan Island area. So, you can see this is Hainan Island. And this is normal outwelling system. Uh, the scientists do lots of transect using, you know, crews, uh, scientific crews, and this is the data that they have. So you can see normal therm thermocline uplifting, thermocline uplifting along the coast. So this is normal because this area will produce upwelling during southwest monsoon. So you can see, you know, cool water, uh, uh, some cool temperature around the, uh, you know, the right side of the island, but. So this is basically what they see. So cool temperature over here, an indicator of upwelling. But one unique thing about this uh, area is you're supposed to have downwelling over here. But now you can see also cool water on the left side of the island, on the western side of the island. So upwelling present in the downwelling side. The question is, how that happens? So what the scientists do is they try to have a look at um, the cross section between the mainland and the uh, island so this is basically the island and this is the mainland so they try to have a look at the cross section similar to uh, what we did uh, in east coast of peninsula malaysia uh, we do a, a transect line using crews and then collect lots of data and then plot the contour surprisingly if you look at this temperature there is a uplifting on this side of the island where it's supposed to be downwelling so what the sci what scientists did was they run what they call as ocean modeling uh, system so when they run the model system basically they have lots of control so they try to simulate what actually happens in the area using mathematical equation and, and computing simulations so by using this computer model simulation they can you know single out different dynamics at different times so for instance this top uh, figures is a control run where you have a uh, outwelling system happens in the area where you, you run every uh, all the dynamic system in in the simulation so you get to see uh, lots of uh, basically the same thing that you see uh, from the ocean so you have upwelling here uh, and then you know, cool water going up so now what they're trying to do is they want to, to look at what happened if they uh, put out you know, tidal forces from the models so they cancel out the tidal forces then they start to see downwelling ha happens in this area so there you are so when you when you single out you know you know put out uh, one dynamic system from the simulation then you can see uh, you know, different forces acting at, at, at different times so this is you know give you some sort of uh, ideas on okay now we don't have tides and suddenly we have uh, outwelling uh, downwelling happens though there's no upwelling but in the next simulation they what they do is they try to run only tides without winds and they start to see a very strong upwelling happens in that case studies where you don't have wind you just run the simulation by only using tides so then the scientists can make a conclusion from this kind of analysis so what they what they conclude it what they concluded is when there is tides tidal forcing somehow can change the dynamic of the system uh, in, in in Hainan Island area you know this kind of this kind of things uh, happens uh, you know in deep not in all places because it depends on the settings of the area 
no um, uh, the location of the area so in this case in Hainan Island tides somehow play a very important role in producing outwellings so if you only have winds without tides so it's not going to happen but instead downwelling doesn't happen upwelling happens because there is tide presence in those areas okay there you are so there is a very interesting uh, outwelling system in, in Hainan Island it follow the same uh, system but there is a, a details explanation about uh, upwellings in one of the area on the eastern uh, western part of the island okay now let's have a look at the, the last one which is bonnie upwelling in Australia so bonnie upwelling is also uh, interesting uh, because it happens in, in, in many places in the southern part of Australia so this is Tas Tasmania so this is south of uh, uh, they call it uh, Victoria area uh, states in, in Australia so you have one two three so they call it uh, uh, this one the middle one is uh, bony upwelling so there is a, a very interesting studies made by camp in 2015 where they try to construct a time series of chlorophyll a which is an indicator of upwelling so they can see uh, they try to understand uh, you know, different strength of upwelling every year happens throughout uh, the past 10 years so this give you an explanation so you can see this is slightly lower profit a high profit a and sometimes it's it, it uh, happens uh, late that year some sometimes it happens early that year and you can see all the peak is you know fluctuates all uh, uh, throughout the time series for the past 10 years so the idea uh, I show you, you know, this kind of uh, details is because I want to show you that upwelling happens, but the strength uh, of the upwelling is not always the same. Also, the time it happens also can vary from time and from years to years. So this is important to understand that we have lots of other influences, especially the wind. So wind. Uh, patterns can change from one year to the other year although it follows the same wind patterns but the details of the patterns is, is different so these details that actually creates uh, more uh, varieties in the um, presence of outwelling in, in certain part of the world in this case uh, they show that uh, it varies from year to year and certain year it can be high certain year it can be low certain year it can be very early and you know, in some years it can be very late so that is the interesting parts of outwelling uh, in the bony eye bony outwelling all right there you are uh, i'll show you four different sites of outwelling uh, east coast of peninsula malaysia uh, you know, north uh, borneo or sabah area and we have hainan and bony outwelling so the whole idea uh, if you can recap the whole objective of, of this study is we try to look at different case study in a small scale outwelling because small scale outwelling is very much different from you know, large scale outwelling in the uh, big ocean basins so small scale outwelling happens seasonally it doesn't happen throughout the year you know, small scale outwelling can uh, be influenced by uh, you know, other details uh, dynamics like tides and in small scale outwellings you can see how varieties of wind system you know, throughout the year can also produce you know, different strength and different time for the outwelling to appear. So this is some of the details that you, know, you will find uh, very interesting because you will do some of your uh, projects on you know, different oceans. So you will find different uh, details of outwelling system uh, you know, throughout different uh, area of the world. So that's all for today and for this lecture. Thank you very much. I hope you get lots of new understanding about outwelling and how different details of outwelling uh, can be produced in different areas which make it more interesting for us to understand thank you very much see you again assalamualaikum